And now... The Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the series of radio dramas dedicated to the supernatural, the unusual, and the unknown. Come with me, my friends. We shall descend to the world of the unknown and forbidden, down to the depths where the veil of time is lifted, and the supernatural reigns as king. Come with me and listen to the tale of The Temple of Weeks and Approach Lee. The drums again. They have such a plaintive sound to them, do they not, senores? They have nothing. They give me the creeps. You seem to know a lot about this area, Juan. Oh, a good deal, Senor Prescott. In the unexplored area is a race of people thought lost to the world. What do you mean? What people? When Cortez conquered Mexico, he did not conquer all the Aztecs. Part of the nation followed Cuitlaua down through Central America into South America, into Brazil, senores. <laughs> into an unexplored part of Brazil, on the very edge of which our camp lies tonight. Are you serious, Juan? Why should I lie, Senor Prescott? We stand close to death. The three of us. <laughs> In just a moment, the Hall of Fantasy will present the Temple of Huitzilopochtli. And now for our story, an original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne entitled The Temple of Huitzilopochtli. I didn't think that day when I came back to our apartment in Caracas after a talk with the old man that Fred Taylor and I were going to wish we'd never heard of oil. That you, Mike? Yes, Fred. What are you doing? Taking a shower. Come on in. Well, did you see him? I saw him, all right. What did you say? I said I saw him. Well, what did he say about the vacation? He said no. Well, how come? We have one coming. Yeah, but not till we finish this next job. Hey, just a second. Now, tell me what he said. Ever hear of the Huruena River? Yes, it's in Brazil. Empties into the Amazon. Well, that's where we're going. What? That's right. Well, you're kidding. No, I'm not. The company just leased a big tract of land along the river. We're to go in and see if we can find any traces of oil or uranium. Uranium? Yes. Bartell's group flew over the tract. The way they've got it figured out, there's not only oil there, but also uranium. So Bartell flew over it. Why don't they send Bartell to walk over it or paddling down the river like we'll have to do? Well, Bartell is senior on the staff. He gets the cream. We get the hominy drits. So who will enter? Mm-hmm. Say, if I remember right, there's some parts of that river that have never been explored. It's in the northern Mato Grosso region, isn't it? Yes. There might be a few natives in that unexplored part that wouldn't want us to be sticking our big noses into their business. Well, the old man said he'd throw in an extra week in the States with pay. Hey, I can hear you talk. <laughs> when do we start? As soon as we can pack and hop a plane to Cuyaba. He doesn't want any grass to grow under our feet, does he? <laughs> I guess not. And hey, don't forget to pack your guns. We might need them. We cleared ourselves with the Brazilian Consul General in Caracas, picked up our visas, and at midnight boarded the plane that would take us to Cuyaba. Back, you wait. Hmm? Well, there I am now. Where are we? Just crossed over into Brazil. Uh, why'd you wake me? I don't know. Oh, nice. No, I, I don't know what it is. We can't sleep. I can't sleep. We should never have started out on this trip. Why oh, shouldn't we? Oh, funny thing. I just have a feeling. Yes, senor. Please be quiet. Oh, got you, amigo. You go to sleep and keep the other passengers awake. Well, just the same. I wish we hadn't started out on this safari. It's got me worried. Landed in Cuyaba, got checked out by the Brazilian authorities, and then went about the business of finding ourselves a guide. Most of them were familiar with the territory leading to the source of the Huruena on the plateau of the Mato Grosso. But none of them had been any farther than 200 miles down the river, and none of them were willing to act as our guide. After we spoke to them, I received the impression that they were afraid. 
Fred was having a drink when he came up and spoke to us. Mm, we're doing fine. We can't even find the guide. Well, we can always follow the map Bartell drew up for us. We're not in the mood to go into the lowlands alone, Mike. There are too many ways a man can die down there. Well, what else can we do? Pardon me, senores. Uh, you want something, amigo? I understand you are looking for a guide. That's right. I may be able to help you. My name is Juan Torigo. Well, have a seat. <laughs> oh, gracias, senor. You care for a drink? No, senor. Uh, you know where we can get a guide? Si. Where? I can guide you. You know the Huruena River? Si, senor. Most of it. And that I do not know. I am willing to make the acquaintance of. Well, what do you know? We look all over Cuyaba for a guide, and then one falls right into our lap. Right. And when can you start? When do you want to leave, senor? As soon as possible. The other guide said that no one was familiar with the river. I am, senor. I will be ready when you want to leave. Uh, can you get the supplies and the boat we need? You will not get a boat in Cuyaba, senor. Supplies and a canoe, that is possible. A boat, I cannot get that for you. Nor can anyone else. We'll settle for that, then. Oh, you need some money. Here. No, senor. I can pay for the canoe and supplies. You can repay me later. Well, that sounds all right to me. Perhaps you can rent an automobile and hire someone to come with us as far as the river. Then he can drive it back to Cuyabo. That's a good idea. Now it's for payment. I am not worried about payment, senor. I am sure I can trust you enough to pay me well for my work. I will be ready to leave tomorrow morning. Good. Get the canoe and the supplies. See. Si. I will meet you at your hotel tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. From there, we can pick up our supplies. Can we leave early? Yes, about six. Well, tomorrow morning, we begin a great adventure. Buenas noches, senor. Buenas noches. <laughs> Seems to be a pretty competent guy, doesn't he? Yes. Well, we'll know tomorrow morning. Right. Senore? Yes, senor. I could not help but see you talking to Juan Torrico, senor. I know you are looking for a guide. Has he offered to guide you? Yes, he has. Why? I would not do it, senores. He's El Diablo, that one. What do you mean? Many parties he has led out, senores, to the Huorena River. Always. He has returned alone. Never has he brought back with him any of those he has led out. Something happens to them, senores. And they are never heard from again. <laughs> Back now to our story, an original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne, entitled The Temple of Huitzilopochtli. Notwithstanding the warning of the girl, we started out the following day for the source of the Huruena. The roads for the first part of the trip were fair, but as we drew farther away from Coyapa, they became worse, and we bumped and jolted our way along for the next five hours until we came to the source of the Huruena. We unloaded the canoe and supplies and had the portage downstream for almost a mile before the stream became wide enough to use a canoe. Where does this tract of land your country at least begin, Signore? About 150 miles down the river, about 10 degrees south of the equator. That is an unexplored area, Signor Prescott. We had a body take a look at it from the plane first before the lease went through. But no one has ever been through the land underground. No one has ever really seen that area. That's right, Juan. How far do you think we can go before dark, Juan? Fifty, sixty miles, Senor Taylor. As long as we paddle with the current. How far have you been down? Oh, oh, oh don't worry, Senor. I have been down this river quite far. The current was swift, and we made excellent time that first afternoon. Towards evening, Juan spotted a good campsite, and we paddled into shore and set up camp. We had a good meal, and we were sitting around the fire when we heard the first drum. With good luck, we ought to make the edge of the track your company leads by tomorrow night, Signore. That's when the work will really begin. You know, I'm... Listen. Drums. Oh, 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 do not be afraid, Signore. Where are they coming from? Somewhere down the river, I think. Listen. There's another one. Have you ever heard them before, Juan? Si, senor. Many times before. <laughs> but there is nothing to worry about. The way you look, one would think they were beating for you. Drums pounded throughout the night. I didn't sleep very well with that incessant throbbing beating against my ears. Towards morning, they were quiet, and I fell off to sleep. 
By six o'clock, we were up, had eaten, and were on the river. Rapids coming up, senore. Yeah, they sound pretty bad. They are bad ones. We must be very careful. Uh, with cartels down here. Look out, senor. There we go. Look out. There's a bird street must just ahead. Ah! Oh, senor. Hey, we're heading for a rock. Hold on, senor. Ah, that is the worst of them, senor. I didn't think we'd ever get through those things alive. I was a little worried myself. No, it's not the time to worry, senor. <laughs> The rapids are nothing compared to what may lie ahead. What do you mean by that one? <laughs> Not a thing, Signore. But who can tell what may happen? According to our map, we had reached the beginning of the company's tract of land. We made camp at a spot about ten degrees south of the equator. Good meal, Juan. Gracias, Senor Taylor. Yeah. According to the stories we heard, this is as far as anyone has ever penetrated down the Huroena. No one has ever gone beyond this. You are wrong in that, Senor Prescott. No one has ever gone beyond this point and lived. Many have gone beyond, and all of them have crossed into the land of their ancestors. That sounds like a threat, Juan. <laughs> Why should I threaten you, Senor Taylor? I don't know. The drums again. They have such a plaint of sound to them, do they not, senor? It's a of nothing. They give me the creeps. I wonder why they never explored this section of Brazil. Many have tried. or have failed. You seem to know a lot about this area, Juan. Oh, a good deal, senor Prescott. In this unexplored area is a race of people not lost to the world. What do you mean? What people? When Cortes conquered Mexico, he did not conquer all the Aztecs. Part of the nation followed Quilahua down through Central America into South America. Into Brazil, senores. <laughs> into an unexplored part of Brazil. On the very edge of which our camp lies tonight. Are you serious, Juan? <laughs> Why should I lie, senor Prescott? We stand close to death. The three of us. Listen. Yes, I heard that cry before. What is it? The call of Wichilopochtli. The ancient war deity of the Aztecs. Wichilopochtli calling into the night, ordering that the sacrifice be brought to him. That drum is pretty close to us. Quite close, Senor Prescott. And do you know what it is saying? No, what? It is saying that we come for the men of another age. We come to bring them back to the temple of Wichlipochtli. You mean they're out there in the dark? See, si. I'm getting out of here. I'm afraid not. Where Uncle. did you get... That's my gun. How did you get it? <laughs> While you were sleeping last night, amigo. We are here, Wichlipochtli. We are here. What are you going to do with us? <laughs> you will run that soon, amigo. Mike, look. They must have been hidden behind the trees out there. Oh, my God! Chirana! Oh, my God! Chirana! They have been waiting for us. We will go with them to the temple of Wichita Postley. They didn't want to take any chance of our getting away, did they? They tied my hands so tightly, I think they stopped the circulation. That's the way mine feel, too. Yeah. I read about these when I was still a kid. Do you know where we are? No. Cortez found them when he first went into Mexico. This is the Teocai, Temple of the Aztecs. What's in those two towers at either side of this landing? The sacred images of the presiding deities. And those blocks of stone in front of the towers? Those are the sacrificial altars. Mike, we have to get out of here. Look, look. Coming up the stairs to the top here. It's Juan Tarico. But he's not wearing the clothes he wore before. He's wearing a scarlet robe. Yeah, so I see. The robe of the sacrificial priest. Ah! Ah, amigo. Are you enjoying our hospitality? What do you intend doing with us, Tarico? Don't you know? No. Have you looked over the side, amigo? Yes. And did you notice the people gathering? Yes. They have come to witness a ceremony. The altar of which Lepochli has been dry too long. What do you mean? That it has been some time since the high priest has made an offering to which Lepochli. And we're to be the offering. Is that right? That's right, amigos. 
<laughs> you are to be the offering. Back now to our story, an original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne, entitled The Temple of Huitzilopochtli. We stood on the square at the top of the temple of Huitzilopochtli. Our hands were bound behind us. Before us stood Juan Tarico, who had offered to act as our guide. Only now he was attired in the ceremonial robes of the high priest. Yes, my friends. <laughs> you are to be the offerings. You dirty... No! You should not lose your temper, amigo. If you are nice, I will make sure your death is speedy. If you continue to act as you have in the past, I hesitate to say how long it will take for death to finally put its mantle on you. We should have taken the advice of the girl in Cuyaba. Oh, yes. The girl in Cuyaba. Por favor, Silara! Por favor, Silara! Let me go! Let me go! Let her go! Amigos, this is Maria Espanta, the girl who warned you about me. Ha ha ha! I had some of my men bring her here. She will be the third offering. Ha ha ha! And now I leave you. Until later. Adios, amigos. Lara! Margarita! What happened, Maria? They came and took me that night. The night I spoke to you. Tarigo must have been watching. And they brought me here. What will they do with us? Kill us in the sacrificial ceremony. Oh, no. Maria, your hands are free. Untie us. What? Untie us. Maybe it'll give us a little more of a chance. When the time comes. See, see, I will untie you. I wonder what they did with our gun. I don't know. They, they tie you very well, senor. Yes, I know. No. No, you, senor. We have to get the circulation back into the zero. Cut your wrist, senor. Yes, I know. Something brewing. Hurry up. Oh, yeah, it is done. It is done. Well, that feels better. Thanks, Maria. What can we do, senor? I don't know, but we're sitting ducks here. Let's try one of those towers. Come on. Right. Just got a glance over the side. There must be a thousand people down there surrounding the temple. And they're all waiting to see us die. Inside, hurry. Look, senor. Human skulls are lining the walls of this place. The ancient Aztecs kept the skulls of their sacrifices. How many have died here? I wouldn't like to know. We're going to die here if we don't do something. Hey, look. Isn't that an entrance over there? Yes. Let's take a look. But it is there with a big down inside the temple. They're coming for us. The only thing we can do is take that stairway. Here. You take one of these torches. Right. I'll take the other. Maria, you stay right behind us. Yes, no. Let's go. I only hope I'm not happening out of the frying pan into the fire. If we wait at certain death, we might have a chance this way. Oh, it is so, so dark in here. There's a landing up ahead. Careful now. Right. Put your torch a little higher, Fred. Hey, look. It's a room. If I'm not mistaken, right in the center, those are guns. Guns, guns. Let's take a look. Not our guns. Perhaps they are guns taken from the other men who came here. That must be it. Guns and ammunition. We have something now to fight with. Over on the other side of the room, the stairway continues. Will we take it, senor? Yes, we will. But first, we take the guns. All the guns and ammunition we can carry here. Hurry. They'll probably figure that we came down here. Well, they slipped up on the left floor. His hands untied. I carry guns and ammunition, too. I cannot shoot, but I can load them for you. Ah, good girl. How you fix mine? I have as many as I can carry. My pockets are full of bullets. Oh, yeah? I have five guns, and I carry this knapsack full of ammunition. Then what's holding us back? You said it. Let's get going. Right. For almost an hour. When we came to the bottom of the stairs, I thought we'd come to an opening somewhere right away. No, I'm not so sure. I don't know where this tunnel is leading us. I think we're pretty close to an exit. I can feel the air moving. Do, do you think they are in back of us? I don't know. Oh, Torrigo will not be beaten this easily. I know that. Hey, look up ahead, huh? Isn't that moonlight up there? See, we are nearing the end of the passageway. I wonder where we'll be when we come out. 
I got the drums again. It's a different beat this time. Perhaps they say too look for us. Maybe. Say, we're coming to the opening. Be careful when we step outside. Oh, you, you think maybe? I don't know. Well, we're here. Yes. And listen, we're close to the river. Hey, look, Mike. Our camp was here. They must have come through the tunnel when they surrounded us. That must be it. I wonder if the canoe is still there. Let's take a look, shall we? Oh. I have a feeling that it... They are here! They have been waiting for us! Ah! No, I don't think they'll be following us. Senores, huh? where do we go now? We'll go down the river until we come to a town. It'll be too hard getting back up. What about the company, Mike? I don't know about the company. But I'm not coming back here. It was too close for me. If they want to explore this country, they can send in someone else. I've come close enough to death. At the temple of Huitzilopochtli. So runs tonight's tale of the unusual, the terrifying, the unknown. Join us again when next we journey down the corridors of the Hall of Fantasy to hear another strange tale of the supernatural. All characters and events portrayed in these programs are fictional, and any similarity to actual events or persons living or dead is purely coincidental.